I put this file out here in uh, week five for you, but this, these are some examples from the textbook, and I want to go through the examples. So the, the first one with net present value here on page 333. Uh, with net present value, we're asking the question of whether I want to take on this investment. We're anticipating cash flows at the end of each one of these years, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11,000 respectively. So to do this, um, if you look at this one, I, I'm going to pull up this net present value function. So I had to go to F of X. And if I go to financial and select NPV, what I did is I put the opportunity cost of capital for the firm at 12%. Then I selected, okay, for the value one, B3, 15,000. I just clicked on that, B4, the 14,000. And when you get to that third or fourth one, you may have to scroll down a little bit to put that last value in there, just to make note of that. So the, this is the present value of all these cash flows. If we discounted each one of these cash flows back to today, what would that be worth to today? Or how much would I have to put in a bank account in order to regenerate those cash flows back? So if I hit okay, you know, Excel just does the present value of the cash flow, but we need to do to find net present value is we need to subtract out that initial 40,000. So I just put a formula in here that says, hey, take this present value of the cash flows, add the negative 40,000, and then this matches what we have in the textbook. The next one was internal rate of return. The internal rate of return, by definition, it says, what is the interest rate? This one we've calculated here that sets the net present value exactly equal to zero. Um, with this project, you'd say as long as this is positive, we accept the project. With an interest rate, internal rate of return, what does this return generate by the project? If my required rate of return is 12%, I'd say, hey, this one has 18.64, I accept the project. But when I look at this function, the big difference between NPV and IRR is when I pull up this function, f of x it asks for the values so i'm just going to take this out and just kind of show you i just highlight even the negative cash flow all the way down to the last positive cash flow we'll leave the guess blank and it tells me that the internal rate of return of this project is 18.64 percent just to show you that concept of net present value equal to zero i just kind of want to show you what happens if i did change this interest rate up here let's just pull this one up and let's say that I put the interest rate at maybe like 15%. Let's see what happens. So, oh, notice the, the present value um, and net present value change. So it's getting closer to zero. If we kept playing with it a little bit, let's just play with it a little bit. Let's try like maybe 18%. Okay, so there's 41,000. So it's getting closer and closer to zero. I could keep going back and forth with this. And eventually this number would get to zero. So I'm just going to uh, go back and change that to the original uh, 12% rate there, 0.12 to get it back to the original answer. But that's really what it's doing. We're just setting the net present value equal to zero. Now, the modified internal rate of return, the example page 346, I just want to pull this one up. Um, hit the F of X. Notice the values. I still highlight the values that go all the way down. But assumes that the finance rate and the reinvestment rate are the same. So it's talking about the terminal value of these inflows. It's that if these cash flows were reinvested at some given interest rate or opportunity cost. So it's going to give a slightly different rate uh, for than an internal rate of return. So I just want to give you that example so you have these to look at. So hopefully this helps with your reading.